heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our God, we thank you very much this morning for this privilege that we have to come into thy holy house. It has been your grace that was our help since we gathered last in your presence. We thank you for keeping fellowship with us. Lord, the evidence of which you are manifesting this morning. We are grateful that we could be in your presence. We thank you for the Sunday school class. Things you've taught, things you've instructed us on. We are grateful, Almighty Father. We appreciate you for the song service. Acts have rendered thanksgiving unto you. They brought their praises and their offerings. I pray, Lord Jesus, it will be accepted in your sight. Lord Jesus, may you come by in your own manner. O Lord, to reveal thyself. Give us things that will encourage our hearts, that will take us deeper in your love, that will take us higher in your joy. Let there be a surround of your Holy Spirit. Move among thy people. Please don't pass no one by. May you stop at the post of each person and grant to them the substance of their request and their desire. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Make your people happy and may you revive their hearts. Souls that may be coming on their way, may you guide their path safely. Those still in their houses, may you give them a quickening. Make a way for each and every one. The believers that are here, may you prepare their hearts. Oh, with things that will take them deeper in your love and higher in your joy. Visit us like never before, that when all things shall be over today, we would have cause to give you praise. We shall give you glory. Be with us, Heavenly Father. Be with your children who are sick and afflicted. Touch them at this hour. Some of them are listening in, in their homes, using the internet and so forth. We we'll pray, Lord, that your cable will pass, O oh God, from us unto them. And may they receive a surge of the Spirit, O oh God, that will give them a quickening. <clears throat> be with your daughter who delivered also, and be with the little baby. Nurture him and bring him to term and to full maturity. Those who are still trusting you for a similar blessing, may you remember. Those who have conceived, may you protect protect the substance you've given keep him away keep him or high away from the devil and let your high watch over your people take glory this morning in the name of the lord jesus christ amen amen god bless you church how many are happy to be in the house of the lord how many are depressed no depression. So maybe the devil is depressed. But the children of God are happy. The way, the way to keep him depressed is when you are happy. You might be going through deep waters but be happy. Amen. Because the anchor holds. Praise the Lord. God bless you saints. You are welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. While we remain standing, let's turn our Bibles. I will come to greet the guests and uh, the few things we need to say. But let's read the Bible. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 16. Amen. All right. It's better. Genesis chapter 16. You remember we stopped at Genesis 15 the last time. And in between, I believe uh, the Lord has blessed us with the gifts of God that are around. Amen. For today, we'll go start Genesis 16. Uh, they are all connected. Genesis 16, 17, and 18. So we'll be moving around those three chapters. And uh, we'll go as far as we can go this morning. 
and uh, when I come back again because I'm going to Bayesa this weekend when I return we'll see how much God will help us further Amen <clears throat> Genesis chapter 16 now Sarai <clears throat> Abram's wife bear him no children and she had an handmaid an Egyptian whose name was Hagar and Sarai said unto Abram Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my mate. It may be that I may obtain children by her. You can see that it's a very old tradition. <coughs> uh, old people will understand uh, this, this verse very well. <coughs> and Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Agar and made the Egyptian after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Agar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, <clears throat> my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid <clears throat> into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of shore. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, <clears throat> and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, <clears throat> thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Uh, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, uh, Thou God seest me, for she said, have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the well was called Bealairoi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Beret. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abram, Abram was first called and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael. To Abraham. May the Lord add his first quan six years. Yeah. Okay. Eighty six years. Okay. When Agar bear Ishmael to Abraham. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. God bless you. You may be seated. We'd like to welcome ourselves this morning to the house of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, I want to say I'm very happy to see every one of you again. And uh, I thank you all for your prayers, your message. Okay, thank you. Your messages and uh, all your support for the trip. It was a, a wonderful trip, as much as it was blessed. Amen. Uh, I went uh, 
and uh, I went a bit fragile when I had to leave, but I trusted God for strength and for grace. And uh, by the time we had the first service, a breeze of grace came upon me, and uh, from that moment I felt so strong. And uh, the Lord saw me. <clears throat> Thank you. The Lord saw me through all the meetings. I never felt I was sick. It was His grace upon my life. And uh, we had people who came to the Lord. We had people whom the Lord delivered. And uh, we have people who were sick that the Lord healed. And uh, we also had a minister's meeting. And uh, I didn't know <laughs> what I was going to <coughs> do with the meeting, but they insisted I must speak to them at the meeting. So I trusted God for a subject. Because uh, apart from the questions that they had, they wanted some sort of admonition. And uh, I was looking up unto God for what the need of the ministry there will be. And exactly what God placed upon my heart represented the challenges that were around the brethren. <clears throat> the word of God is still a discerner of the thoughts and the intents. And uh, by the time we finished that teaching I came to discover that all the questions they wanted to ask revolved around it and I didn't see any of the questions before and they said beyond the questions we brought plus several hundreds more the message has answered their questions and uh, they were so happy uh, some of them revolved around things that are going on if you dock your head too much on the internet and uh, you don't have a, <coughs> a real firm stand in the word, something will sway you. Amen. So I want to admonish uh, all of us, especially those of you that love to research. You have enough to research already. <coughs> You have more than 1,200 messages to do your research on. All of us, including myself, we've not exhausted all the depth of the message. And the message of the hour has no alternative. So don't be looking for somebody who can give you a second opinion. <clears throat> any fivefold minister cannot give you another opinion or should not give you an opinion contrary to the message. If they do, they don't have the spirit. It's a pity a lot of people appeal to all these sentiments. And by the time they came out of their research, they become more confused. And that's not only the congregation, even I find it with the clergy. So if a clergy becomes confused, what is he going to do to the people he's ministering to? But I thank God. God solved everything by the meetings. You need to see the joy and the revival around those men of God. And they said, a good labor, the reward of a good labor is more labor. So I got an invitation that will last me a whole year in Ghana. <laughs> but, I, but I'm not prepared for it. <laughs> because there were about 70 ministers who attended the minister's meeting. And uh, they felt that, ah, this thing should be taken even further. I said, now, the reason we have ministers meeting, the prophet said, is to help one man. And so that that one man could help another thousand. So if you have been helped, you go help the several others. Amen. But when the Lord gives us a chance, 
will be happy to visit around. I was only able to touch three places in the interior. And uh, some pleaded, but I hope they understood because I was working with the strength of grace and ability that my body could carry me. I don't want to overstretch or, or take undue advantage of the grace of God. So, uh, but in between it, in the course of the eight days, if I take the days of travel out of it, I had services for more than six to seven times. So, <laughs> but during the day, uh, I told them, don't come to my hotel room, just leave me alone. Only come pick me for service so that I can rest and I can just relax myself. So, but I was very happy at the turnout of the minister's meeting. It was such a help to the people of God. Uh, many of them were troubled about many things. And the Lord, who knew the need of his servants, came on the scene and they helped over 70 ministers uh, to line their thoughts up properly. I told them that if this is the only thing I came for, I am fulfilled for my Ghana trip. And that was such a wonderful time. It reminded me of uh, uh, 2015 when we ministered at a convention in Florida. Uh, that was when this issue of uh, cloud remember the story around the cloud uh, those of you tuned in on um, last Friday <clears throat> you will have gotten some few things in there but it became such a big problem in the last five or six years and uh, a lot of people were abandoning the message and uh, about 33 or 40 people I can't remember the exact number again we are also on the verge of leaving the message of the hour. That's ministers. But God in his mercy brought a whole lot of them for that convention in Florida. And uh, I was speaking, I, didn't, I can't remember the subject exactly, but must have been something around the crisis in our exodus. And uh, somehow the Lord led me into that. And uh, by the time we brought the thoughts of the prophets on those things, <clears throat> I think my wife was there. About 33 to 40 ministers repented and said, now we will follow this message. We didn't know this was the position of the prophet. We never saw it like this. So I said, if about 40 ministers are redeemed, then God has helped us to redeem several thousands that are under that ministry so it pays but the lessons of it for me is this it pays to stick with the message <clears throat> in that meeting an old woman who was always in the prophet's missionary team she was a <coughs> she was a cook and cleaner for them when they travel we were privileged to meet her and uh, the old woman waited for me. She was very old. Waited for me to come out uh, after the service. And she ran towards me and uh, held me very tight and prayed, prayed for a long time for me in the open place there. Then after she said, my eyes have seen the glory of God. Let me now depart. An old woman of close to, I can forget her age, but over 80, she was running around. She was so propelled by the spirit of that world, she ran around the whole compound of the auditorium, as wide and big as it is. She ran around it, jumping and praising God. And everybody was wondering where she got the strength from. And then when she gave her testimony, she said, Since this. <coughs> Uh, uh, critics and attackers began, she has not been having a good sleep. He said, now we are not preachers. There is no way for us to defend the message of the hour than just giving the little testimonies that we know. He said, but I told the pastors, who I can see around one thing, I said, these little small boys 
Because many, are, many of them are just old enough to be their children. Uh, her children. She was an old woman. Where you see her? He said, these small boys and young people talking, running their mouth. said, they could do it because they have never felt the glory around the prophet when he was here. He said, if you stayed with the prophet or you attended the meetings first hand, you don't have the boldness to do what you are doing today. Then she said, she started praying in her own way. God raised up somebody who will defend this message. Raise up men of God who will defend this message. And you say, I shouldn't dance, I shouldn't jump when I saw my prayer answered today. And she said, the kind of atmosphere she felt in that meeting was the same she was feeling when the prophet was here. And they said, that is why she could run all around. Then she came again and laid hands upon me and prayed and prayed. He said, Pastor, if I die today, I'm fulfilled. He said, in fact, I don't want to wait again so I won't see something else. I said, Mama, the Lord will keep you as long as he desires. All is well. So, uh, God help us. Uh, dock your head more into the message. You are not going to get any better by listening to things, reading things that will not edify you or strengthen your faith. Amen. For some of us, we have eat our own final bus stop. And to me, it doesn't get any better than the message of the hour. So I need no other arguments. I need no other plea. I don't know what goes on on the internet. It's not my problem. No fivefold was sent to me. It was the messenger that was sent to me. And he had the vindication of Elijah already. I'm not looking for another one. I know if I keep digging into the vitamins of this only one thing, I'm certain to meet him in the morning. It's a blessed assurance. It will never fail. You see, the crisis of many exodus is that, you know, when the spies were told to go and spy the land, they gave them 40 days. Now, that 40 days, it, that length of time was given them to prove the witnesses. They probably didn't need 40 days to search the entire land. But God gave enough latitude to prove what every person is. And I can prove that to you by the scripture. Jesus Christ said, except the day be cut short, no flesh shall be saved. So, the 40 days is also getting too long for people today. And that is why they are not satisfied with the promise they were given. He said, Behold, I send Elijah the prophet. After Elijah the prophet, did he promise you any other thing? So, why don't you stick with Elijah the prophet? And just keep sticking with him. Amen? Stay with the message. Stick with the message. Even if we preach the same thing every day. Amen. If your vessel is clean, you will keep getting something new. All the time. And let me tell you, there's a death in this message that will keep mining until the Lord will come. There's a height of joy in this message that you keep attaining, exploring until it will come. I challenge you to study the word with an open mind. The leadership message you studied the last time, go pick it again this time you will find something new. So if I have that, why am I wasting my time? Who is this sister? Is that sister Maria? Wonderful. Sister Chinda is here. God bless you. Am I right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She's looking younger and younger. She's not aging. Welcome my sister. God bless you. Where is brother Adara? We have a brother Adara here. Brother Joel, God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Why is Brother Manuel Johnson? You are also there. Ah, rise up, rise up, rise up. God bless you. You are welcome. Amen. Sorry for the way I came in. That's just the way it is upon my heart this morning. Amen. So that's my welcome message to you. Welcome greetings. And then we welcome everyone 
into the house of the Lord this morning. May the Lord bless you all richly. Trust you had a good weekend and uh, the Lord will help us in this new week. His grace will be sufficient. His angel will go before us. He will defeat every plan of the devil. He will open the windows of heaven that his blessings may pour upon us beyond what we have ever witnessed. Don't ever be discouraged. Just keep pressing on. A little more day, a little more time to watch and wait. And the toys of the road will soon be like nothing as we keep sweeping through the grace of God. God bless you, my brother. It uh, sounds like a new face to me also. Hey, you are not a new face. All right, God bless you. <laughs> you are welcome. What's the name, sir? Brother Wally, God bless you. Amen. So God bless every one of you. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. So, uh, the services remain as they are. Wednesday, uh, there will be evening service today. It's Wednesday service. And you pray for me. Uh, we have a special meetings in Bayesa, Yenagua this weekend from Friday till Sunday. Amen. They wanted an Easter program, but because my Easter was already booked long time. And uh, this is why uh, we were waiting for climate to get clearer to see if it will be possible or not. But they've confirmed to me this week is going to be possible. So this is why Yenegua came early. So their Easter came early. So we'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll convert your prayers for a good meeting. My throat has been disturbing me a bit. Uh, those of you who watch the Friday program will know that I struggle with it for a while. So please hold me in your prayers that the Lord will touch it. Amen. So I'll tell you about Easter later. <clears throat> so this morning, if God will be our help, which I trust, we'll continue our study of the book of Genesis. Greetings from the pastor. Is around. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> it seems to be when I'm around, it takes a break. So, <laughs> when I'm not him, it works. All right. So, the Lord bless you. Pray for us. Pray for the servants of God. Mm. Bro, Samson and Wanje, uh, it's in a wire this morning. Amen. And uh, we trust it will be a blessing to God's people. But I guess the rest of God's servants are at home, except uh, our regular Korodu men of God, who is there with Brother Victor and you know, to to be of service to the saints out there. So let's be praying for them. Amen. So greetings from Ghana. Greetings from a lot of pastors. About 75 pastors all together. No, more than that. About 80 pastors all together. Because <coughs> quite a number of them also attended the uh, convention uh, that we had. Amen. So, and from a whole lot of host of the brethren. They are happy to know that you all are fine. And uh, they, they wanted another minister's meeting next month. I said, this next month, which starts tomorrow, is also minister's meeting in Nigeria. So, <laughs> I, uh, instead of me coming, you all can travel down. You are very free. Traveling this time around has a lot of sacrifice. For, for this Ghana trip, you do four COVID tests. I have the last one tomorrow to go and do. Amen. So you pray for me that it will be negative as usual. <laughs> it's been negative so far. Amen. You will do before you travel. When you get to Ghana, as you are landing in Ghana, you will do another one. As you landed right at the airport, they are a bit more sophisticated. You will do it and uh, you will not leave that airport. Well, once, when you finish the test, they allow you to go through the immigration clearance, take your bag. As you move to the exit, they will say, wait, your result has not arrived. When your result arrives, if you are negative, then you can enter the country. If you are positive with your bag and everything, you go to the isolation center. <laughs> huh? Then, when I'm to leave also, I have to do another one. Then you do another one, and uh, you feel, uh, what do they call it? Permission to travel. If you are not permitted, 
to enter Nigeria even after the test, you still won't enter. And uh, by the time you enter, you will commit to doing another one after eight days of entrance. So I've committed to another one as I entered. So they've given me an appointment to do it again tomorrow. So for test alone, it costs over 200000 apart from the tickets. <laughs> oh yes, it's over 200000 for COVID test alone. So going to Ghana, that shouldn't be more than uh, Brofolution, is it 800? Yeah, it's now 460,000 altogether. So you can see that it wasn't a cheap thing. So this was why I felt so committed to those brethren and I allowed them to use me the much they use me because I want them to have value for their money. <laughs> Amen. And uh, the, for the Easter now, the, I think it's going to be a bit more. Uh, yeah. I'm going to UK for Easter for Easter program and those ones are five tests which is costing close to 300,000 naira. Test alone per person. So you can see that these brethren are investing a lot. So we trust that the Lord will continue to make it a blessing. Alright. God bless you. So <clears throat> the book of Genesis the last time we stopped at Genesis chapter 15 and uh, we are advancing this morning to Genesis chapter 16. In Genesis chapter 16 where we read, we saw here the problem of all of us. <clears throat> and this problem we are looking at this morning does not cut out any category of believer. It is just a human feeling. Abraham and Sarah in Genesis 15 God <coughs> sealed a deal with them. They have not waited. They have not shown enough patience to wait till God give them the evidence of the covenant of the deal before they started thinking of helping themselves. I'm going to make it as simple and as relaxing as possible because it's a challenge we all can face in life. But I want to say this morning, those that wait upon the Lord are the only ones promised to renew their strength. <clears throat> Let me tell you, God is not unmindful of your situation. You can never help yourself better than God can help you. Whatever condition you are, I said it the last time and I repeat, God knows about it. Even while you are yet sinner, if you are a seed of God, let me reaffirm it, your life has never been without cater. Everything that happens to you, whether negative or positive, I repeat, God knows about it. <clears throat> God designed certain things to happen in a certain way so that the story of your life could be written like that. Because somebody will need that story for an encouragement or for a leadership. So, this is why the Bible said, count it all joy in every situation. When we are wrong, we must feel sorry for our wrong. But we must not be overwhelmed by its condemnation. Did you hear me? You must never be overwhelmed by the guilt of your situation. It is satanic in itself to continuously carry a guilt. Because when you continuously carry a gift, what it will do is to affect your relationship with your God. A guilty man is not bold to have an access to the throne of grace. But before there is a problem, 
Before there is a failure, there was already a pardon. God knew at some point in your life you will fail. The prophet said, the best among us makes mistakes. The church needs to know that so that you even show the right attitude to people who make mistakes. Because sometimes it's our attitudes that destroy many. Did you hear me, church? And Brother Bram said, you've got to be careful of your attitude. Because he, <coughs> he said, your attitude can skew somebody to another side. And it can be a blessing to one another. Look, whatever happens, we must do what God will do in that situation. So we are confronted here with the situation that affects all of us. These guys have been holding on to the promise for a while. If God had been relating with them, let's do some calendar maths. <clears throat> because we always say, I've not tested it very well, but it sounds true. We always say that Abraham waited for how long? For 25 years. Is that right? Meaning that God started the dealing with Abraham around the age of 75. And Sarah around the age of 65. Isn't it? Okay. Now, at this age that they are, they are around 86. So if you take 75 from 86, that means they've been enjoying a fellowship with God for about 11 years. They've been waiting on the promise. <clears throat> they might not have become what they should be in the Lord, but they've been in fellowship with God for 11 years. Somebody who has been in service for 11 years, we can't call him a baby Christian any longer. Isn't it? But in their case, they are still baby. The prophet said what they had was believing in what God says. And at some point, God stepped up the game. Because when you are in fellowship with God, it must be going higher. The height of joy must be increasing. The depth of love must be getting deeper. If you are not experiencing that, you are in the wilderness. When Israel was in the wilderness, they were in their wandering. Especially after Kadesh Barnea. Between Egypt to Kadesh Barnea was two years. And between Kadesh Barnea to Canaan was less than two weeks. But a journey of less than two weeks became 38 years. Because of what? Because of unbelief. And why will it take that turn for people who have been relating with God for some good years? Because God waved every supernatural that he had for them and yet with all this nothing mixed with faith. They saw it, they enjoyed it but it never became a revelation to them. They drank water from the rock. <coughs> they had manna from on high. When they felt they needed some protein, God said, that manna in itself was complete food. <clears throat> it had everything they need. Because it was angel's food. It's not an ordinary food. It's not a Cabri food. It's not a Nestle food. It was heavenly prepared. All the, all the vitamin B, all the vitamin complex. High on and whatever protein, carbohydrate, fat, and oil was in that food. That was all they needed. But by their own lust, they wanted a change of taste. They were used to flesh. And God still sent flesh to them. If you want variety, that is fine. Take. 
And they had it. They, God made sure they had it until it came out of their nose. They saw the Red Sea parted. They saw water turn to blood. They saw flies. <coughs> they saw frogs. All those things were spoken into existence by the power of God. They saw supernatural. Haven't we seen the supernatural of God today? Haven't we seen the hands of the Lord in our lives? Tell me who has God not done anything forever? But they came to Kadesh. <coughs> While God was doing those things, His intention was to build confidence in their heart. He would teach them, the gospel will come with signs and wonders, with miracles, with every blessing. All those things were to do what? Build faith. Build confidence. Okay, maybe here. But they refused still the confidence of the word. Until they came to Kadesh and by their mouth sealed their doom. We cannot make it. And God had to prove them for 38 years. He created the 38 years for only one reason. So that everybody who confessed negatively should, will die. And it is only those who confess positively will advance. So if you are in a stationary situation, watch your confession. If you have confessed negatively, repent of it. If you find yourself that way this morning, don't allow the devil to build a guilty face around you. Do you know why? If God is not mindful of you, he will not talk like this. You see, to the pure, all things are pure. Even if the world comes like a slayer, it is still the love of God for a believer. He said, even though he slay me, yet will I do what? Because you are taking it positively. That if he is not mindful of you, he will not talk like that. After all, when we leave our houses, when we left our homes, what did we say? God speak to me today. Amen. We can't choose his style for him to speak. As long as he speaks. And as long as he spoke, that is fine for us. You love him this morning. So, your challenges of life, your troubles of life, your failures, your ups, your downs, everything... They are part of the way God wanted your story to be written. You know, that was where, that's why you will see in the message, at some point, it was thought that Jonah backslid it. How many ever read that? Then the prophet stepped the top higher with the abundance of revelation. He said, many said Jonah backslid it, but I said this morning, he didn't backslide. You caught that. Amen. Amen. So you've got to watch the progression of the word. We can teach it like a backslidded and we'll be right. It will help somebody. But when you begin to grow in a level of grace and you begin to understand the picture better, you will realize that Jonah had to do what he did. I will prove it to you. <clears throat> he had to do it. <laughs> don't worry the proof is in your scriptures when our Lord Jesus Christ came did you know he talked about Jonah but did he ever talk about Jonah in the negative is it in the Bible he, talk, he said that which Jonah did was necessary to give a sign a shadow of resurrection So how can you teach backsliddenness in the context of Jesus' approach? It's not possible. He said, as Jonah stayed three days and three nights in the fish belly, so must the Son of Man. 
Be in the belly of the earth. That was the language of Jesus. So Jonah was a shadow of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That was the only thing Jesus thought about that. <coughs> and the prophet came around and said, uh -huh. He said, you see, if Jonah hadn't gotten into the fish, Nineveh as a nation would not have repented. So all these things are working for good. They are all in God's program. He said, Nineveh worshipped the fish. They believed in God. But their own medium of contact to God was an idol they took as fish. So he said, you imagine a big fish came to the shore. And when he opened his mouth, he dropped somebody. And when that person came out, he began to preach repentance. Right from the shore of the river to the length. He said that you are wondering how that nation entirely repented. Their God spoke. But what did their God do? He led them back to the real God. You cannot defeat God. This program is God's program. Allow him his right of way. The picture will be clear. The prophet said Jonah's story had to be written like that. In order to give an evidence for Jesus to use. So if the prophet now said later he didn't backslid, we must agree with him. Because the facts are clear. So you don't know why the story of your life has to be written the way it is. But one thing you must learn is patience with God. Those that wait upon the Lord must renew their strength. <clears throat> That's a good background for this chapter. In this chapter, we saw this family who had been around God for about 11 years. And let me tell you, it has not been a dull moment. It's been active 11 years. God will every once in a while come speak to them. It was within these 11 years that God came down and reaffirmed the covenant. By doing it in a way Abraham will understood. And I'm sure to a large extent <clears throat> Abraham was fine. To a large to some extent Sarai was fine. But as time goes on suggestions started. Ideas started flowing well. In the message the absolute or an absolute the prophet said Christianity is going through deep waters. And he said every believer must go through their own deep waters. He said but in your depth of water passing be careful of the echoes. <clears throat> because echoes of counsel, of advices, of ideas will come. He said, that is what you need to be careful with. Those echoes will appeal to your current situations. They will appeal to your emotions. But the question is, do they appeal to the word? So these echoes started flying. And the most <coughs> convincing echo was an idea that Sarai, Sarai brought up. He said, you know what? We've been trusting God for this child. Though, and it seemed not to be coming. We don't even know whether we will come. But I have an idea. We don't know where Sarai got his idea. Because there is no precedence for this idea in the word. So the only place it could have... And this idea never came from God. So the only place it could have come from was the whole human tradition. And most old human traditions are inspired by the devil. <clears throat> because don't forget, the background of this family was idol worshipping. 
So even though the Lord has called them out to be having a work with him, yet they've not been completely pushed. You see, this is why I say you should relax. Amen. They've not been completely pushed of their old traditional ways. You must be pushed of your traditional ways. You must be pushed of your customs. Especially those that undermine the word of God. Don't feel bad about it. It's just the right thing to do. I know many are devoted to customs. Are loyal to customs more than they are loyal to the word. Ah, They will say it is custom. They will never accept it. As long as they are human, God will ride over them. Let every man's word be a lie. <laughs> Let only the word of God be the truth. A lot of customs practices are fraudulent. Fraudulent with intention to only enrich and benefit some few cliques. <clears throat> the carcasses, thank you. <laughs> So if you are privileged to be among the carcasses, you will enjoy it too. If they tell you bring fowl, bring this one, that the, this idol, that's what it takes. The idol in question is a stick. How foolish can a man be? Can a stick eat any food? When you leave, the, the priest will thank God, say thank God for your provision. He will tell his family, food has landed. Those are the idols that are eating your food. Nonsense. So, when you talk about 419, don't just look at those who are doing on the internet. It's right inside the interior. It began from there. The devil is only expanding and making the curriculum sophisticated. Oh, yes. Availing themselves of contemporary technology for the same old devilish practice. You want to get married now. Those who never knew whether you are alive or not. They didn't know whether you have eaten ever in your life. But they saw you full grown. And because you yourself, you went and hand over yourself. They will give you a list of 15 societies that you don't know whether they exist or not. It's all fraud. But I'm expanding on these things for you to know that there is nothing new under the sun. It's just a recycling. Sarai came and said... Well, I have an idea. You see, <coughs> this is my mate. They do say it all, that God can through somebody help another person. They still have it till today. I don't know in some tribes, but some tribes still have it till today. And that is why many became polygamous by accident. Or by mention of custom, say, if you get this one, if God help this one to have child, it will rub on this one, and it will rub, and he keep getting them. If he's so unlucky, that one does not also have. Then he will get another one. Who taught you that? It has to be Satan. You know why it has to be Satan? Because the practice negates the word. <laughs> the Bible said, this couple, they gave heed. When the sister suggested it to the brother, it's a case of if that's what you want, that's fine. The Bible said, Abraham akin to the voice of Sarai, to the voice of his wife. But you know what they have tried to do by that? They've resorted into self help God does not need your help to bring his word to pass. What he needs is your faith. Are you hearing me, church? 
He said, but it's waited so long. Who are you to determine the length? He said, the vision is for what? <clears throat> Though it tarry, and he said, it will not even tarry. Two languages there. God was appealing to your sentiment as a man of time. And he was appealing to his position as a man of eternity. Based on his programs. For you, five years is such a long time. To God, it is but few minutes. Or seconds. Is that right? So there's always a crisis of timing between the one who lives in eternity and the one who lives in time. But what is the measurement for saying it is too long? Did he give you a time? No church, let's face it. Did he give you a time? What he gave them is that you will have that child. Amen. <clears throat> what they need to tell themselves each day, we will have that child. Amen. What Abraham should have told Sarah is that <clears throat> we don't need this formula. The one who promised can never fail. Amen. Just a few days ago or just less than a year ago or some few months ago or few years ago he has just entered into a covenant with us. You saw it. He came down. He made a covenant. He bet it over his own life. And we know that he cannot die. So if he cannot die, he must keep his word. He told us by himself he had sworn. Amen. He has made an oath. Let's believe. When somebody comes to you with proposals that are uh, that are anti word what you should do is to encourage that person to believe. Don't join them in, co in committing to proposals that are against the word of the Lord. No man can help God. But these things sweep upon us. Amen. These things always do what? Sweep upon us. Pressures of life sweep it upon us. Timing sweep it upon us. A woman running headlong into menopause, thinking that menopause is powerful enough to study from childbirth, if you come under that pressure, it sweep it upon you. Because we must think for you. The word thinks for you. He said, You know, as you are mortal. But the reason this was written is for you to escape that. Anytime we take up the matter upon ourselves, we are bound to fail. God allowed this because he wanted to write a story. But it wasn't God's perfect will. Did you hear me? Imagine a world without an Ishmael. Oh church! I will come to it. Because I will trace Ishmael's generation for you. There are 12 nations. And they form the Arab nation today. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. I want this off air. Let they say that I'm a terrorist. Or I'm, I'm, I'm anti-people. Let they call it a speech. But it is the truth anyhow. What blessings have those people brought to the earth? The earth could have done without Ishmael. <clears throat> because it was an accidental proposal. There are things God permitted, but he never accepted but how are we going to preach it like this if there was nothing like that? To show you why you must not resort to self-help. That's my message to you this morning. 
I felt strong about that. I know many of you are waiting on God's promises for one thing or the other. Don't resort to self-help. Don't accept proposals. If you're on the verge of doing that, proposals that are contrary to the word will backfire. Don't do it. Wait upon the Lord. The Lord will certainly come. Help will come. Deliverance will come. Provisions will come. Abundance will come. The Lord is not unmindful of the situation and condition of every person. And he will still do what no other power can do. Give him the right of way. Let go and let God in your life. You can never wait enough when God is in the matter. When you are holding on to his promises, you can never wait enough. Because you think time is going. When God comes, you realize that time has just begun. <clears throat> oh, Lazarus was sick. Wasn't time going? The life support machine was reading zero. Wasn't time going? Lazarus eventually died. Has time not gone? Lazarus was eventually buried. Hasn't time gone? In the timing of man, it was over. Lazarus had already started corrupting. Is it not completely over? Then Jesus came. Then Jesus came and pulled back the clock. Amen. And started it all over again. He is more powerful to do that. We can reach those things in the world and not be encouraged. So when you are fainting and failing, take these precious words as your anchor, as your encouragement, and rise up in faith. And damn the devil. It is not over until God says it is over. However gone the time is, when Jesus comes, it has just begun. And Jesus will come. And when he comes, he breaks the tempter's power. He takes away every gloom. He fills the life with glory. He gives you a new beginning. Your calendar must be restarted when the Lord comes on the scene. You said prove it by the Bible. They said, the people say today a fool at 40 is a what? Don't join them in that statement. It's not a statement in God's economy. Moses truly failed at 40. But time has just begun. <laughs> Hallelujah. What he couldn't achieve at 40. My brother, my sister at 80. He achieved it. And he lived another 40 years. Making 120. He lived to enjoy it. Because God reversed the calendar. And started a new beginning. He's still the same God. He said, behold, I make all things new. I know this is helping somebody. Nowadays our messages are prophetic. And they are discerning. So if you are thinking to result in self help don't do it. If an unbeliever is already chasing you, and you think you aren't getting a believer to look at you, and you want to go for an unbeliever, don't do it. I'm telling you this morning. You might be a brother, you might be a sister. Don't do it. It's God to backfire. There will never be an excuse before the throne of mercy for any wrong living. No, sir. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Sarah gave the proposal. Abraham hearkened. Both the person who gave and the one who hearkened, they are the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. If Abraham knew better, what he would have done is hold his wife and say, my wife, don't worry. The Lord will make a way. The strength of Israel can never lie. 
He has promised he will not fail. He will do what he says he will do. Let us keep believing. Our good will become better. Our bad will become good. Our better will become the best. So when your brother comes to you and he talks like he's breaking, you know what to tell him now. When your sister comes to you, you know what to tell her. When your wife comes to you, you know what to tell her. Amen. They are not unbelievers. They are just getting under the weight. Are you listening to me? That man is not an unbeliever. He's just getting under the weight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some fireworks are going here. You can see the anointing is spreading. Hallelujah. I'll soon give them microphone too. So they can bless you for that. Yeah. Amen. But what am I saying? Don't ever when the devil gives you a press, don't buckle down for him. Mm -mm. They did so that they can give you an example. <clears throat> did you catch it? They gave us an example of what we shouldn't do. We will see in their lives great virtues too. Amen. That is the life of a believer. We will see great things that we should do. But God is using their life to show us how to and how not to. An example. And that's relationship with God. They are the test case. They are the acid test. They are the shadows. So we are not reading them a story. We are reading the book of life. We are reading things that happened. We are reading things that God permitted for our lessons. So they he accepted her guy. <laughs> And uh, when Abraham went into Haggai, one time conception straight. You see the God we serve. You see the God we serve. <laughs> Amen. The woman in the covenant was struggling to conceive. Amen. But just a bit, taken one time, conceived. And it will look as if Sarah was true. She will have rose up. You see what I'm telling you? You see what I'm saying? I know by this now, mine will come. <laughs> I, maybe in order to prove that assertion wrong, if they, are, if they were to have been visited earlier, God will pull it back. Because Sarah will have been waiting. Somebody has uh, broken the, uh, the door, broken the barrier. They say breaking the eyes. I break, broke the jeans. In my family, there is no barrenness now. So I must have a child. Who told you now? I'm saying that pattern was not the word of God. God will only back his word. Even though it looks as if Sarah was winning. But let's see how our victory lasts. <laughs> how much our victory. <laughs> the Bible said, when Agar realized that she, <laughs> as, uh, as is human, the one who has been doing, yes, mommy. Yes, ma. Agar, can you bring that in for me? Well, I, I, I think we should, we, we, should, we should understand something now. We should try and understand something now. I remembered I came in here as a maid. But, Mama, I want you to know that my status has changed. Uh, all within a week. And if my status has changed, my responsibilities must change. Now we have to sit and talk about what I do, what you do, man. 
I mean, you can lord it over me. You are a wife. I'm a wife now. And I'm a wife plus. I'm a wife on the road to being a mother. Isn't that what the Bible said? He said our mistress was despised in her here to be like you out there. You know, that's the way it will start. I went there and said, Is it me you are talking to like that? Uh, Mama, you better get it straight. We are now colleagues, oh. I've been promoted, oh. And the Lord that I love, the Lord that I serve, knowing what you will do to me, has vindicated to me. Then, after a while, well, Mama, I don't blame you. It's because you don't know how it feels when women are in this kind of condition. <laughs> You thought it would help you. It's not going to help you. Then said I sat there. Said, you see? You see? You see? It's the man that suffers for everything. So brothers, when, when they do like that, you know they resemble somebody. <laughs> it's, a, it's a family strain. When it is good, when it is, even for their own wrong, you have to apologize. <laughs> Hallelujah. Abraham said, Sarah, the case is simple now. Uh, I will put her in her place. Uh, Aga, this is still your mistress, oh. you are still a maid, oh. and uh, whatever she likes, she can do with you. Ah, Aga said, eh? I missed the target. Oh. <laughs> and then Sarah said, uh huh. Some people think that. Look, let me tell you, they lived as natural as you are living. They are all men and like passion like you are. So some people will think that because then they have become something. And they will want to come and lord over a relationship that I've built for how many years? It can't work. It can't work. It is me and you in this house. I will show you. Pay, pay. And the Bible says Sarah showed her. And when she couldn't receive the paper again, what did she do? So we now know who is who. Then Sarah was with you. I put her in her place. Mike. <laughs> How many years have we been coming together? One small girl from nowhere, a little rat. You want to take over my house? Because of because Sarah never blamed herself for anything. Did you notice this anymore? Rather than blame, she will appeal to her much. It is good that I want to do, and they are turning it to evil in my hand now. They are still like that here today. Amen. Amen. Sorry, my sisters. I'm not talking to you. I'm just telling the story. <laughs> and we must love them like that. <laughs> Any real genuine woman is territorial. And they have a right to be. So brothers, don't mess around. If they are not comfortable with your dealing with that fellow, drop it. Oh, sure. They can be a good help to help you draw the line. Sometimes you brothers don't know when to draw the line. Are we together? He said, it's just a sister. It's just a day. You don't know when to draw the line. If your wives become uncomfortable with that relationship, it's high time. You do what? You, you did what? You dropped it. Hmm. Am I weapon? Am I giving you guys weapon? But be objective. Be reasonable. Amen. Isn't this good for us? Are we getting something from this family? That's why I said we shall relaxingly do it. I'm not preaching today. We're just teaching, bringing some snippets here and there. What is the lesson in here? The thing. The proposal by which Sarah thought she would be helped 
backfired. Now they forgot about her own child bearing. The proposal woke her up into a situation that she forgot about the issue of child bearing. And all she was mindful of is how to retain a position in the family. When you take it upon yourself, you will fail. Didn't God see what Moses saw? When the taskmasters of Egypt will be whipping the people of God, did God not see it? I'm asking you, church. Did God not see them beating his own children? Why didn't he act immediately? Until Moses felt that uh, if God is slow, he is too, I, I have a witness that I'm to do this job. Uh, I, me, I can't stand it. Let me tell you, you can never help any man better or much more than his creator will help him. That is the wisdom you must have. Then he said, I'll take up the matter. Moses actually did. But you know the story. Did he work out? It backfired. He couldn't even wait to defend his so-called victory. He ran away. The thing by which he thought he would deliver the people eventually put him in bondage for 40 years. Anytime you take it upon yourself, you are bound to what? Fail. This morning, let go and let God. This morning, tell it to your soul, don't worry. The Lord will make a way. It will be all right. It's a passing phase. God has not abandoned Israel. God has not abandoned his church. God has not abandoned your family. God has not abandoned his people. Wait upon the Lord. Look at Zechariah and Elizabeth. Many examples are just coming. They were in the same shoes. They were old and well stricken in age. That's what the Bible also said. They've gone past bearing time. But God kept them alive. You know why? Because Elizabeth's womb was to carry the forerunner. Some things we come to understand by the word later. By the high self of God, equal high self of this age. Of what uses a forerunner without pointing to the one who is to forerun. If, Elise, if John had come long time ago by the real life of Elizabeth, he will wait and wait and preach and preach <laughs> and become old and live far away from the one who is to forerun. The prophet said, the forerunner and the one is to forerun must be, uh, must be present around the same time. Amen. That is why he told us that the visibility of the cloud, the manifestation of the cloud, must take place while the messenger is on earth. Amen. Did you catch it? So when you take it back to the scriptural template for the forerunner, who forerun the first coming of Christ? John, the, he must be here when the person is to, because he must introduce him. So they must be contemporaries. That was why that womb was shut and preserved. Till the moment Christ will come. And they were born around six months apart. Amen. And they grew around the same time. So the job becomes easier. The ways of God are past finding. And let me tell you, God may not explain himself. If he explains everything about himself, your walk with him will not be by faith. He wants you to walk with him by faith. Hallelujah! It's not as if he cannot tell you things. But if he brought you in a way to have answer for everything, your walk will not be by faith.
God bless you, church. We are closing in a few while. I think we've achieved some climax by our little story. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So he allowed John to be born right around the time. And friends, <coughs> it was why both of them were in the womb that they started fellowshipping. The first time the name Jesus was mentioned in human lips. What did he give to John? He gave him baptism of the Holy Ghost. My goodness. Because up till the time, <coughs> till Mary came to visit Elizabeth, the baby was neither dead nor alive. No kicking, no nothing. But you see, he was waiting. <laughs> he was waiting for the life giver. Because it's all supernatural. And let me tell you, these sisters were supernatural. We're, we're, we're spiritual. Do you know when Mary came, <clears throat> Elizabeth said, from whence cometh the mother of my Lord? Who told her? Who told her? Those were spiritual people. The news wasn't public yet. A pregnancy that was just around three months. He said, from whence came the mother of my Lord? Mary was a junior cousin completely. Elizabeth did not call her cousin. Amen. He knew that God had changed the status of that woman. He said, from whence came the mother of my Lord? And Mary gave her testimony. The moment she mentioned the name Jesus in that testimony, John began revival. He said, come on now. I'm ready to come out. He said, really? <laughs> if the name of Jesus will give life to a six-month pregnancy, what is it doing to you, brother? What is it doing to you, sister? This is the way God does his things. Then, Agar ran away. <clears throat> the Bible said the angel of the Lord came down. <clears throat> and they kept repeating the angel of the Lord. But we know that was God himself. <clears throat> because eventually, even Agar, she has lived long enough with Abraham and the family to know who the Lord is. Aga never called him the angel of the Lord. He called him the Lord. He knew it. She knew it. And she asked, what is the problem? She started, eh, this and this. What was the summary God told him? I know your problem. Go back and humble yourself. And submit. <laughs> you may be carrying the child of her husband. You may be viewed as a wife, but you are not on a level. I will bless you, but you are not on a level. She is in the covenant. You are not in there. My goodness. The Lord said, go now and submit. And I like her guy. She must have been a, she must have been a real nice lady. She just got caught in her achievement. The Bible says she never argued. She went quietly. Mommy, I'm sorry. Eh, Sarah said, so you know to do this before. You want to prove that, Mommy, I'm sorry. It must not be difficult for you to say, um. When she submitted herself, she lived in the house. Amen. But you see, despite this arrangement, don't forget what has happened was outside the provision of the word. What has happened was purely permissive. God will never adopt it as his perfect will. This is why when you come to Genesis chapter 17, you will realize that <coughs> the moment Ishmael was born, Abraham became satisfied. 
That's another human. Sarah had no child, but Abraham had a child. Life really, so no problem. So it became Sarah's problem now. Read it, it's there in your Bible. You want me to show you the evidence? Wait for it. I will show you. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> At least Abraham will tell himself <coughs> whether by a mate or by child, my child. Child is a child. I have a child. And it's bearing my name. And he seems satisfied. So unconsciously too, Abraham was getting satisfied with what wasn't in the covenant. But will it change the mind of God? <clears throat> Do you see why Genesis 15 was very necessary? I told you that Genesis 15 was God's arrangement to block Satan. Do you remember? By offering an advance atonement. <clears throat> Such that even if this family puts themselves in a situation where it will almost be impossible for God to keep his word, yet he will keep his word to them. This is the meaning of Abraham's unconditional covenant. It is not what Abraham did. It is what God has already done. And I'm so glad God took us out of a damn covenant. He placed us in a Brahmic covenant. It's not going to be the quantity of what we do. It's going to be the abundance of what he has done. Amen. This is why all things are yours. Oh my. Your failure notwithstanding. If you fall, you will rise. You can't even fall. The sacrifice avails. That sacrifice of Genesis 15 was repeated on the cross of Calvary. <clears throat> there was a ripping apart again. Amen. His body was ripped. Amen. His soul was taken out. His spirit went to God. But the sacrifice was accepted. And your perfection comes by your sacrifice. Amen. That sacrifice became your advance atonement. No matter what happened, the believer cannot be brought into jeopardy. You have made it. And when truly a believer, a genuine believer sees this, it gives him the challenge to serve God, to live right. If you take a notion to take it as a license for wrong living, you were not prepared for. You were not taught of in that covenant. <clears throat> Look at that family. You see what the scripture said? It said these people are men of like passion as you were. Abraham was somehow already satisfied. He was no more anxious. He was no more under pressure. He's got a child. But you see, the truth is that even though he has gotten the child, God did not recognize that child. Anything that is not in the promise does not attract the attention of God. God is dealing with you according to the promise. He will only back up what is in his word. Anything outside of his word is your own side. You see, God told that guy, he said, don't worry. You will bring forth that child safely. I will bless him. I will multiply him. Twelve nations will come out of him. And he will be wealthy. He will be rich. And they are today. All the Middle East Arab nations. The twelve of them, they are wealthy. They are rich. They dip their feet into oil. But that is all they will get. <laughs> Did you hear me, church? That is all they will. Do you see why those nations can never serve God in the right way? They acknowledge the existence of God, but they can never come into His own provided way. 
And do you see why Israel is Israel? And Arabs are Arabs. Come on church. One came from Isaac. I'm even talking natural now. And one came from Ishmael. God told Isaac. God told Abraham. Let's come to it. <coughs> In Genesis 17, God came down. And he said, now, today, we want to do something. But there's a requirement. Abraham, you've been walking zigzag. Your zigzag walking is enough. The first message, verse 1 of Genesis 17, is Abraham, walk before me and be ye perfect. If he was already walking perfectly before God, will God say that? Amen. God called his attention, come walk before me and be perfect. So all this zigzag, all these your custom proposals, all this your this and that, it's over. I want to do a new thing. You've gone about it your own way, it has backfired. I am coming. Do you know what? God came 13 years after. Between Genesis 16 and Genesis 17 was 13 years. Read your Bible. Abraham was 99 years in Genesis 17. He was 86 years in Genesis 16. <clears throat> so Ishmael that was born then had become a 13 year old. <laughs> then God, you see the long suffering of God? Then God came and said, look my friend, all this your zigzag movement, your up and down is over. Walk before me and be what? And as a sign of that walking, I'm going to change your name. I'm bringing you to victory. I'm going to change your identity. I'm going to change your confession. <clears throat> Abraham means I father. God is not interested in I father. That's not the covenant. In Genesis chapter 15, the covenant is father of many nations. Hallelujah. Father of many. So Abraham is the father of the Arabians, Arabs. Amen. And is the father of Israel. And is the father of all of us. By the royal seed Jesus Christ. The nation of the blood. A holy people. A holy nation. A peculiar people. Royal priesthood. Abraham is our father. John chapter 18 witnessed that to us. Jesus said, if we believe like Abraham believed, we are truly seeds of Abraham. So great nations are coming. That was a promise to Abraham. Is that right? So, but Abraham, being Abraham, he would never become father of many nations. So God said, from today, you are no longer Abraham, you become Abraham. Abraham means father of many nations. And your wife also, who is called Sarai, from today becomes Sarah. A princess. Amen. God changed their name. Despite all their ups and their downs. Their zigzag movement, rising today, falling tomorrow. Amen. You will come to that point that your experience will become stable. You will enter into the holiest of holies. Amen. The world will be shut out. And you will be shut in with God. From that time you bear consistent testimony. It's part of your working with God. When a man is justified, it's a work of grace. But not an entire work of grace. When a man moves to sanctification, he's still traveling in grace. When he receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he has landed in grace. And from there, grace will take him to full stature. Which is his adoption. You love him? So, <clears throat> from that moment, the confession of Abraham changed. He started bearing father of many nations. So, wherever he goes and you ask him, what is your name? I'm a father of many nations. Does he have them yet? But confession brings... So what God gave him in Genesis 17 
was what? The right confession. So this morning, the weak can say I'm strong. The barren can say I'm a mother. Even give your child name. After all, in the Bible, names are given in advance sometimes before the child comes. Hallelujah. You can receive the revelation of the name of your child before you ever conceive. And Mama Isaac, where is Isaac? He's on the way. Isaac will come because your body must obey your confession. That was how God worked with Abraham. He wasn't the father of many nations, but God told him, call yourself that. Anytime they ask your name, say you are a father of many nations. That is the meaning of Abraham. It wasn't an ordinary name. It was a confession. And your body, your situation, must obey the confession. And God said, ask Sarah, sir. She's going to give birth. She's going to conceive and bring forth. And Abraham allowed God to finish. I'm, I'm trying to answer you now. To show you Abraham was satisfied already with Ishmael. Unconsciously. He wasn't anxious again. And Abraham allowed God to finish. And he laughed. <laughs> uh, this God said, oh, he, he doesn't seem to surprise me. God! Let Ishmael live before you. You want me to have Isaac, have you? And Ishmael is the same initials. I, Abraham. I, Abraham. It's in your Bible. The Bible says Sarah laughed within herself. But Abraham laughed to the face of God. He allowed God to finish his story on her. And Sarah shall conceive. And you will call the name of the boy Isaac. And then... He said, excuse me, sir. That story is... Uh, maybe you forgot. You give me one already. Let her. Meaning, he was so satisfied. So the rest is Sarah's problem. He can tell it anywhere. Me, I'm no bad, no. I have a child. How about Mama Sarah? Uh, talk, uh, no, talk to her. Talk to her. Uh, this, but this is my own testimony. Then that is when Abraham will remember that it's an individual race. That was why when God told him <laughs> that Sarah will conceive, he said, Excuse me, we've held that one for how many years now? Had it together for me. They are 99 now, 24 years since you've been talking about it. Ishmael had come, let him live before you. God said, No way. Ishmael is a product of the unbelief of you and Sarah. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. God reaffirmed this position in what? In Genesis 17. Ishmael is your own people's product. Oh, is not mine. Oh! Can you see this church? He said that is not my own. The one I promise you is not Ishmael. Uh, I know you are a father. You will be sympathetic to the cause of your child. That's fine. Deal with it. And God knew what was still going to happen. He didn't tell Abraham. He must have said you. The boy you will still send out of this house. Don't worry. <laughs> because the prophet said, Sarah had to demand that Ishmael be sent out. It said because not just for Sarah... Because in God's divine covenant, the seed cannot be heir with the shock. Do you see how everything is panning out? Sarah was just an instrument being used so that we can have the message the seed will not be here with the shock. And that was why when uh, when Sarah eventually conceived, who I'm, I'm putting forward because I want to stop on Genesis 17, uh, Genesis 16 and 17. When Sarah eventually conceived and the little boy came, <laughs> Ishmael inherited mocking from the mother. He started mocking. <laughs> he said, these, these old old people, when they give birth to children, let's see how healthy their children will be. See me strong. I came from a young, full-blooded mother. I said, I will listen, sir. Ah. 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 Like mother, like son. It's okay. 
Then one day, when she couldn't stomach it again, Abraham, come. You see? Eh, my Lord, uh, my Lord, yeah. <laughs> come. But this Lord, we have to obey this time around. Come, come, come. come. You see this boy? Abraham said, that's Ishmael now. I, well, I don't know. This boy. Uh, what again, Sarah? I want you to send him out. Eh? From his father's house. I don't know whether it's his father's house or not. My own is that he must leave. The Bible said the thing displeased Abraham. How can? Said no. We must appeal this case. Let's go and talk to God about it. God was waiting. Abraham didn't know that it was God's program. When he came, Abraham, Abraham, when you are acting to your wife the first time, did you check with me? Don't go to God if you didn't introduce God into the matter. A lesson for you. When we give you the word of God in a matter, you despise it. When the thing backfire, you are coming to us to pray to God. We shall tell you, go and meet the God who gave you the permission to do it. Yeah, because we need a judicial president. So, Abraham said, God, we have come. Oh. Sarah has started again. Hey, what did my daughter, your princess, what did she do this time around? Ah, God, did you hear a conversation yesterday? She said, ah, this Sarah. God said, talk now. Stop weeping emotion. Sorry, sorry, daddy. Sorry, father. This Sarah told me, was bold to tell me that my son, oh, my firstborn. Abraham thought that was his firstborn. <laughs> my firstborn, my darling Ishmael, must leave this. I don't, what did, what will an innocent 13, 14 year old boy do? Let, he said he should leave. God said, mm -hmm. who was the person that was instrumental to this birth of Ishmael? It's the same Sarah. God, I don't know you will even ask. It is the same woman. When he suggested it to you, did you convert? Did you ask me about it? Mm, today, you know they have a new language. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. That, that was my mistake. That was my mistake. It, 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 it is simple now. You hearken to her the first time. You must hearken to her now. Ah, God, is that what you are going to say? That is my verdict. Listen to your wife. It was the mess she created and she is ready to sort out the mess. So listen to her. Let her sort out clear her mess. So Ishmael is a mess. God says, see to it yourself. And the Bible said, sorrowfully, Abraham had to send. Sarah made it clear. He said, this son of the bond woman will not be here. <laughs> hey, you've got to know your rights. <laughs> you've got to know your position. You've got to know your blessings. He said, I'm a free woman. Free woman gave birth to free sons. Free children. This one is a bond woman. Abraham, you may call her your wife, is a bond woman. She's my maid. And whatever she gave birth to is also bondage. But today, I free them, let them live. Because he's not going to share the inheritance with my son. And God said, Amen, Sarah. You know why? Because Sarah's position is according to the covenant. And that was why in Genesis chapter 22, when God came down, just to drill Ishmael's story down complete for you. You know, when he came down, he said, Isaac, he said, Abraham, take thy son. Thine. Eh. I think he called Abraham. He said, take thy son, Isaac. Isaac, thy son. You see, I'm telling you, I have support here. Isaac, thy son, thine only. God was rubbing it in. He knew that family crisis before. So he was replying Abraham very well now. 
that look Ishmael that you are I, I don't reckon with him and it's true Ishmael was the son of Abraham I father Isaac was the son of Abraham right now God wasn't talking to Abraham God was talking to <laughs> did you catch that if he was talking to Abraham he could reckon with Ishmael but he's talking to Abraham amen Isaac never came when Abraham was Abraham Isaac was born by Abraham Ishmael was born by Abraham if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed behold all things are so even Ishmael passed away God didn't forget God knew Isaac was existing uh, Ishmael was existing at that time Ishmael was already 25 years old because Isaac was around 12 at the time of that call of Genesis 22 are you catching it? so a 25 years old is old enough not to be ignored and from the account of the scripture there is still interaction between Abraham and Ishmael even though they don't live in the same environment read your bible so it's too conspicuous and adult to be forgotten he existed but you see when God is dealing according to covenant anything outside of it God doesn't reckon with it this is why all these Boko Haram terrorists God is not reckoning with them God is only pointing to the bride, to the world, to the purple country. Amen. The bamboo cotton, the red, uh, the red China, the other cotton, the iron cotton, uh, Russia, they, they don't have anything. Russia is just a tool in the hands of God to avenge the blood of the saints and do the will because Vatican will be blown out of the map. It is thus said the Lord. It will never fail. Amen. And their supporter, America. Because those are the two birthright losers. I will talk about that later. Amen. When we move into Joseph, you will know the two birthright losers. Amen. And America will also be burned by Russia. The seventh vision, I looked behind, I saw smokes and craters and debris all over America. But before that takes place, believer is gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my loving brother. When the world's on fire, don't you want God's bosom to be your pillow? Hide me, O oh God, in the rock of ages. Rock of ages. Clap for me and you. Shalom, let us rise up. Hallelujah. That was all to Ishmael. Anything under the promise, take it. Don't accept, don't take self-help. God is more than capable to keep his word and to fulfill it. Has he said anything that he will not perform? No, let's wait upon him. Because there shall be a performance of all that he says. They that wait upon shall renew. Yes, they shall mount up with wings as an eagle as an eagle. oh yes they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not get oh teach me Lord yes teach me Lord the first time's up Oh, teach me, Lord, to wait, to wait down on my knees. Oh, till in your own good time you answer my plea. Oh, yes, teach me not to rely, rely. 
Yes, but to wait in prayers for an answer for you. Oh, do not wait upon the Lord. Upon the Lord shall reveal. Yes, yes, they shall come. Man of with wings. Oh, as as an eagle, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not Oh, teach me, Lord. Yes, teach me, Lord, to win. Oh, teach me, Lord. My pride, oh, and call on your name, call on your name, keep my feet, ring, oh, yes, keep my heart on the Lord, have me be on this earth. What you want. Oh Lord, teach us to wait upon the Lord. Yes, share in Him. Madam, with wings of eagle. Hallelujah. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. Teach me, Lord, Lord Jesus, please teach us to wait upon thee. Take away impatience out of our lives. Help us to hold on to your promises. May we never hurt under pressure. May we never succumb, O oh God, to the wishes of the devil, to the echoes of the enemy in the hour of temptation. Lord, help us that your word might be dear to us and we might remain loyal to it. In any circumstance, in any situation, give us grace, Almighty Father. Give us strength. Give us, give us your mercy, Lord. We just ask for grace this morning. We just ask for mercy, O oh Lord. Touch each and every one of us. Visit us, O oh God, in a very special way. If there be anybody at breaking point, may you rescue such an one. May the word that has gone for restore them. Heal their broken heart. O oh God, strengthen their feeble knees. Arise unto the help of the church give grace, Lord. May your words discover our secret closet, Lord. And dear Jesus, give us deliverance. Give us a turnaround, a restoration as much as we have need of you. Let your words stop us, O oh God, in the path of evil tendencies. May we rise in your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless your church this morning. Bless your servants, O oh God. As we go, may you dismiss us with your blessings. Give us a wonderful time of break and may you restore us back at the right time to continue to dine and wine in your presence. Bless the next service, O God, and be with the saints everywhere. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.